uh, and that can be very crucial. All right. Well, it sounds like Thunder has just a little bit easier of a draft to execute, but Mad Kings, they're going to make them fight for it. This is, of course, the final match before that we will see who gets to that well, finals for the lower bracket and wins a spot to go to TI along with Vivo Key Stars and, of course, Beast Coast and Evil Geniuses. So, Both these teams just three wins away from qualifying for TI right now. They just need this win right here and then go on into the next series and claim two wins in that one. And that will be it. They will make it to TI. Do you think they're stressed? Do you think they're feeling like, oh my god, like we got to get this? Or do you think they're like, you know, we're just having fun? I think they're greatly stressed. I I think all these players are stressed right now, okay, honestly. Right. Uh, even if you're experienced, uh, even if uh -oh. you played. This is a little bit scary here for Knight. Knows that if he slows down Adrian, that uh, has a better chance of trying to escape. Yeah, I feel like maybe you could have gone for the, you know, potential uh, Blood Grenade and Tombstone play, but you really want to have Decay for level one on the lane overall. They could have gone the first blood, but it's probably not worth it, uh, to be honest. Yeah, I think Tombstone would be on cooldown as well for so long. Yeah, I think that the, definitely the play there is to make sure you have Decay to bully in this bottom lane. You want to give Adrian the best start as possible, and the Tomb is just maybe too greedy. Yeah, I, I think I agree on that. And uh, we'll have to keep an eye on how the lanes are going to start out here. Mid lane, the Invoker versus Void Spirit. Generally a lane that I would favor the Void Spirit a bit, to be honest. Some bullying coming out here in the bottom lane. Red Monster eating one of those uh, Earth Spikes, but we'll continue to just trade back and forth. Yeah, Monster just uh, has some regen, so gonna sit under tower for a bit, tango up, but needs to get those double hero decays so he gets a nice and juicy HP pool. They stack up, he will happily take that. This is gonna be a really awkward lane here for PP in mid. Well, you said it's going to be an awkward lane? Oh, I asked. I'm sorry. I wasn't oh, sure if, it, if I lost you on the call or something. That's why I was Yeah, maybe, maybe it cut out a bit. Uh, I don't think so. Like I said, I think that Void Spirit actually has a bit of an advantage against the... Uh, Void Spirit has an advantage against the Invoker because he has really great lasted damage to begin with. And he has his, uh, his Resonant Pulse as well to help CS. So, so far, he's 5 and 3, got those extra denies there, whereas the Invoker is 6 and 1. But uh, with the extra CSing here, he's actually ahead by, you know, one last to two denies. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're not going to see much going on here in this top lane. Knight's just going to want to farm continuously. And uh, I feel like Oscar and Genetic, the kill potential is not super, super high at this time. Um, yeah, I mean, level 3 is probably the strongest spike for them here, but both teams have a lot of potential here. The troll is uh, a hero with double nuke in the lane, so you got to be careful about taking harassment if you're Snapfire. So far, Earth Spirit doing a good job kind of threatening Oracle every time he goes up. Get a nice little D-Ward. Gets the block and the D-Ward of his own camp, so... Uh, Changing the, the block status. So who's on a tighter timer, would you say, looking at this draft? Mm, I think probably Mad Kings. Sven scales pretty damn well, but at the same time, going late game against Troll, Invoker, Darkseer, I think they just outscale them at some point with all these heroes getting more and more powerful. Late game Invoker is crazy nowadays with uh, him being a universal hero as well. Even just his right click into the abilities uh, becomes a little bit too much to handle. So what's the timing going to look like then for Mad King since they are on that tighter uh, time schedule? Like mm. What particular items or levels? Well, I would like to see Void Spirit get involved a lot early on okay. in general, but probably for Sven it's going to be once he gets his Blink Dagger. That's when he's going to start coming in and making the big swings, I guess. Okay. Well, knowing PP, he's going to be very active. This guy likes to be very aggressive early on and be that tempo creator, so it's not a good hero for it. See a bit of a move towards the rune control right now for uh, water runes. Janek gonna go and head and steal some bounty rune here as well on the way. Might as well. You can kick him away, kick him. <laughs> I 
Just laying in some right click here. I mean, MJZ is pretty awkwardly positioned as an Oracle. You don't have that much movement speed. Can't really run away that easily here. Mm. Yeah, he'll take a lot of harass for that. And that will ensure that PP is able to go and grab the rune. And uh, Knight goes and grabs the bottom water rune, just making sure that they won't be able to get double for this Void Spirit. Yeah, Void Spirit is going to be happy anyway. Uh, thought just the EMP on mid. I'm dying in so a bit of trouble. That's a cheeky move in the bottom lane. I thought they was going to be able to run away, but not going to be able to quite do it. As you do get a roll in here from Janik, they'll make this rotation, turn their attention, kill Illich. To get a return kill at least for uh, that first blood there. And uh, Sven does stay alive and keeps farming. Gonna be uh, completely fine. Meanwhile, top though, that means that you left that lane. So look at Oracle. He's going in and just saying, okay, you're not allowed to come up that close. Yes, yeah, Snapfire, not the uh, most comfy hero being all alone. However, there is the roll in from Genix. So MJZ in just an awkward position. A little bit of a slow coming out from Knight. Red Monster's here, though. He drops the tombstone. That'll be a kill for Oscar. And now Knight is forced to run away. But they are swift. They are relentless. And they want to get as much damage as possible here. In fact, they go for the roll. A couple of these pings coming out. Looks like they're going to send someone up, try to protect him. Jenik is going to get hit underneath the tower. Oh, but a Knight's Earth Spike coming out from Knight will ensure that they get the kill. Another TP. Oscar, this is not looking good for you, my friend, as they don't have the Fortune's End. And one final hit from Knight will ensure that the offlaner falls on the side of Monkey, uh, not Monkey King's Mad yeah. King. <laughs> that was some underestimating right there, just diving under tower against the troll is a very risky thing to do. And a nice TP by a lion, the stun actually cancelled the cookie from uh, triggering onto the troll there as uh, the impale changes the, the, the Z axis uh, movement. Just right in the nick of time, that's for sure. Six minutes, it's going to be an arcane rune. It gets picked up by Knight, so PP now in a real awkward position. This is uh, going to be a dead Void Spirit, I think. No? He's going to survive a little bit longer. Tornado coming in. He's forced to use those steps yeah. to get away. Gets him to safety, but he will have to run all the way to base. Doesn't have boots yet as well, so it doesn't feel that amazing for him. And uh, 6.25 on the clock now. We see both the sports coming up towards top again, going behind the Snapfire. And there's not much that Oscar can do about this either. Do we have teleports? We don't have teleports on... Hmm, this is looking a little rough. Okay, all right, looks like Oscar's gonna be able to survive. They won't poke too hard. Yeah. Wisdom Rune is about to spawn, so they should try and sneak around for maybe a steal or at least take their own. Looks like uh, Illich is gonna go over and take their own uh, Wisdom Rune. Could stack up the Ancients as well. Not gonna do it on the way there. A little bit of a missed uh, opportunity. This is going down. Adrian sitting at 48 and 10 CS currently on his Sven and 35 and 9 on the troll. Knight, of course, did have uh, quite the chase going on earlier with the rotations from the support, so it makes a bit sense here. So it does get thrown out of position thanks to that wild wing, but Oscar, uh oh, this is looking a little bit scary for him. Roll forward and now Knight, he's feeling pretty okay. He's just going to turn his attention over to the tombstone. Slatums is also here. The cold snap landing, followed up with an earth spike. They go and strike back ferociously on the side of Thunder. That's an important rotation as well. The first gank for Invoker is always the hardest one to succeed with because you don't have earned charges yet. But he succeeds, gets two earned charges for his trouble as well, and goes back towards mid. This is going to help him a little bit. 10 seconds now until the uh, power runes are spawning. Void Spirit can't check the bottom one, and uh, Janek trying to check top, but has to be careful here. There's a roll, there's a grab, and there will not be a rune for Slatums. Yeah, Knight on his lion, just not really close enough there to punish their spirit. Hmm. Mask Madness online for Adrian now, so his farm should start accelerating. Still working towards that Battle Fury though on Knight. Again, he's had a more of a disrupted lane during this time. Yeah, the, the troll... I mean, having a decent lane, but not quite as easy. Uh, there's been a lot of attention towards top lane, where Sven has kind of just been left alone down here. And 1v1ing against the Darkseer is not really a problem for him at all. He's just going to clear the lane and go back jungle. And again, we see all this attention towards the troll. I mean, it's working out for him. He ended up getting some kills and some assists, but... He definitely would like to be just hanging out in his own jungle, hitting creeps, and have to be careful. Yeah, they realize that Invoker 
Oscars here. They found themselves Red Monster. See those snap fire kisses getting dished out by Oscar, trying to put it out as much as they can over on the Slottos, but not going to be able to do quite enough. A good cookie, though, into a roll from Genic. Scatter Blast coming into play with these Earth Spikes have been on point. It's a double kill for Knight. So, you know what? He's had a lot of people in his lane, but hey, if they're going to offer up their bodies as tribute, I think he's okay with it. Yeah, very happy to take that and back to farming immediately. Good rotation by the Invoker and MJC on point with his Oracle there. The Fates Edict protecting the Invoker really well from the Mortimer Kisses. And now look at the tempo they're starting to play with. The Invoker immediately going towards bottom as well. Using this Ghost Walk to regenerate. You don't ever really need to go base. It's one of the reasons why the hero is just so damn strong currently. Yeah, they're making a lot of nice moves on the side of Thunder. I feel like we're consistently seeing all these heroes in the top. PB is going to make his first rotation. He's but... looking to join top, but it's a little bit awkward as the pull is here. He's just going to kill the creeps in the end. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. But that puts him in a nice position to apply some of this pressure. The Oracle does have level 6, though. He's sitting behind, trying to hide in a tree line. Jenna going to be the one who does the poking, but it doesn't feel like they're necessarily looking for these kills. It's against Latums is here. Janek's going to probably get left behind Knight appearing, and he's just gone so fast that they don't want to continue. Cyclone going to connect over onto Red Monster. They have the cookie to buy him a little bit more space, but they have the drag back because Illic has made the rotation. So Knight, he's just on a mega kill streak. Fantastic movements here. I mean, this is also what I expect from mid invoker. So damn strong at rotating early on. Just on point again, coming in from behind. They even have sentries down. Jenek placed the sentry, but the moment they saw the invoker, it was already too late. He was in a good position to just punish them. Getting the tornado over on the undying as well there was a good uh, bonus catch. Getting one kill would have been good. Getting two kills, even better there for them. I'm starting to get a little bit concerned here for the side of, of Mad Kings because yes, the Sven has been able to go and hit all these creeps, but they've had such active heroes over on the side of Thunder that they're just starting to run away a little bit with this lead, it feels. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Sven will keep ramping up though. He's already ahead of the troll by a good margin. And once he starts going over and looking towards the Ancients as well, his farm speed is gonna ramp even more. So it is, it is worrisome right now. But his timing is not far away. Blink Dagger is the next item. He got the Echo Saber now on, on the Sven. So the moment he has Blink, we're going to see Adrian just try and join these fights and get more stuff done. My concern is that it's just him, though. Like, I feel like the rest of his team is having some difficulty because they've had those deaths. Um, and they are trying to force things to happen, but they are going to start falling behind in terms of experience, too. Yeah, I mean, they're having a tough time right now, but they're trying trying to control runes, is trying to play active. They do have some really nice combos for Sven later on. All right, they lay a trap for Sladums. This is looking pretty good, but they're not going to be able to finish them off. Do they not have detection? You have to have detection against a, an invoker, you guys. Fortune's end. Oh, big finger use. They'll get a kill on Genic. If he's still looking for this opening, has the Astral Step drag back over onto Knight. Wants to make him pay for that kill. His red Monster is here too. He's gonna go for probably another Decay very shortly. Still doesn't have that Tombstone. As well. end up getting a kill on Adrian while all this is going on in the mid lane. That is huge. And they still have a managed kill Knight. Just a heal from Oracle. Good positioning by MJC, keeping Knight alive there. This is just looking amazing for Thunder Awaken right now. All their moves are just working out really well, and Knight is going to take over the bottom tower now. I really agree with you. I hate this Knight and Knight. One of them has to rename themselves. You can't have two Knights on the same team. It's, it's, it's too much. Otherwise, we're going to come up with a nickname for you. You don't <laughs> want that, guys. Top lane, the Snapfire. Got vacuum back. <laughs> yep. That's not looking great for them. Illith turning his attention over to Red Monster. This Tombstone, you know, is doing a bunch. Knight may end up falling because of it. No, he doesn't. Never mind. Man, Thunder has just hit their stride, and they've got their foot on the gas pedal. Full throttle. It was a clutch hex right there. Very, very last second. Knight manages to stay alive, and he's going to go down towards bottom and then run back and take the Wisdom Rune. Is his play here, right? and probably going to stack up the Ancients as well for his troll who is uh, definitely taking over the farm as well with these moves working out so beautifully. He's been part of eight kills already. I mean, life is good if you're smiling, Knight. This troll has been involved with eight kills, like you said. He's got all the farm that, you know, 
despite the fact that they have tried to disrupt his lane, you know, the kills do make up for that. And Yeah, move is towards mid lane right now. They're trying to make something happen, but they don't have the Sven blink. So I'm not sure if they can commit for a tier one tower push. If they just get tornadoed and counter TP'd a Darkseer vacuum, they could be in trouble immediately again. So a little bit awkward right now for Mad Kings, how they're going to play the map. Getting close and closer to the blink dagger for Adrian. You know, there's something really funny <coughs> in this game that I just that? noticed. They got four Tumblr's toys on the side of uh, Mad Kings. They all have Tumblr's toy apart from the Void Spirit. So there's a lot of hopping around in these fights. I mean, mobility is a big deal. I, I don't think I've seen four in the same team before. It's, um, I mean, it's very nice. Getting closer is, uh, is a key thing, but it doesn't seem to be enough for them right now. They need that Blink Dagger for big mm -hmm. mobility increase here. Smoke play coming out from Thunder. They know that they're in their jungle. They're going to try to put the pressure and push them out. Slatum's leading the charge. He's Genic. Go for that little snappy play, and it's a fast pit where they just take him down. I love the play of just using the ulti there as Lion. Like, don't even hesitate. Get the kill quick and then reset. You get some damage stacking as well for the future ultis. Already got two stacks on Lion. See, this is what I wanted to see earlier. Like, I've seen a couple times where Slatums, you know, he's in this mid lane and he just doesn't manage to link up with anybody and make things happen. A little bit early on that? Nah, it doesn't matter. PP is taking so much damage. They follow up with the vacuum and they have the spirit vessel charge on him. Not sure if it's going to be quite Sunstrike? enough. Nah. Sunstrike? Nah, not going to be on the spot. And there's all those snapfire kisses. Adrian jumping in, though. We'll be able to get kill on Knight. Showing a lot of promise now with that Blink Dagger getting into this nice position. Red Monster perhaps going a little bit too far. Knight will be able to finish him off with a ranged axe. Troll is here and I don't think that you want to fight into it. The Sven is thinking about jumping something, sitting around. But they don't have the Snapfire because they're going for it though. All right onto the back lines. Get MJZ. And that's a nice vacuum. The cookie out forward over onto Knight. But he doesn't seem to really care too much as the tower will go down. They're chasing after Adrian. They'll have to be happy with Janik instead. That was a buyback used at least by the Oracle, so something for Mad Kings, but it feels like another fight where they are the ones just running away and losing their tower again. Map control is just fully going the way of this uh, Thunder Awakened squad. The full Sanji Asha plus Battle Fury Troll is so strong in the fights right now. And that's I mean, going to be like Roche on the menu. The Roche. Yeah. I mean, they might as well. He didn't end up using Battle Trance during that at all. Yeah, still has that available. And they have a lot of uh, sustainability here as well with a mm. Vanguard on Darkseer. Got the heals coming in from Oracle, so can easily take down the Roche. Even with it being scanned out, there's no way to get over there. At least PP is getting mid tower, so get something. Working towards a Yasha on the Void Spirit, going for the classic build Echo Saber into Manta, Nullifier. Gonna be uh, most likely his items. I think this game you might need a BKB as well, though. There's a few things that are just worrisome. The Lion, the Invoker, the Darks here. Invoker and, and Lion alone, like the two of them have just been sticking together like glue and they're making so much happen because of that chain stun potential and nuke damage. Like that's that's what? worth it enough for me. Like look at PP, he's walking right down into this area. They're gonna go up to the high ground. Are they gonna be able to see him? Yes, Ladum turns around. He pings it out. PP though, he sees that little bit of the cold feet going on. They could maybe set up They're here. They're gonna try, yeah, they'll go for X it. Finger available. Knight waiting patiently. In comes Illic as well. Should be able to drag him back and get yet another pick off. Oh man, that, that was really costly for him as well. You don't want to lose your mid player when the game is this tough. He has only 6.7k net worth, lowest out of all the cores here. And oh no, no, they're going for the, the emotional alacrity. damage. All the tips. All the tips. Just watching this troll hit even faster than he already is. Yeah, going for a BKB next and then the shard is queued up and I think they can force the enemy back here even. <laughs> Go to the high grounds. Yeah, I mean, they've got an Aegis. They got a very strong troll to boot. I wouldn't be surprised if they stick around if they don't opt to go back. Yeah, this is uh, a very potent push to be honest. They have Crimson Guard and Pipe. The timing is here for them. And they have their saves too. Like you can see how far MJZ is sitting. Looks like Slatums will back away though. They want to deep push in that top lane. No boots to travel on him. So he's just going to go 
push out, take a look and see if anyone's sticking around because the Sven has uh, has been doing some work up there. Yeah, he's looking for his fan for sure, but uh, Sven TP base, he has the BKB complete with Blink Dagger, so we'll see if he can find a good fight here. They have uh, really good wards here. Although Slatoms is going to break it, so that's going to show the Sven, and they did not have the Earth Spirit nearby to be able to go and immediately dust, so that's a little bit of a disappointment, I think, for the side of Mad Kings. Yeah, slightly unfortunate there, it just kind of worked out for Slatoms as he was running around the area. Oh, that is so costly, though. You want to get something out of this Blink and BKB. Now instead, it's going to be Troll just walking in here. Again, no fear. He's got the Aegis. He's got his team behind him smoked up. Jennick is going to roll forward because they do manage to find PP on the back lines. Got two different fights going on. Jennick not looking like he's going to survive. On the back, they managed to keep Slatoms alive. They'll use that false promise, but he's nice him. He's doing so much damage. He's trying to grab himself this Adrian, and he's just not able to quite get there. There it is, the cookie hop. Oh, no, he's trapped. He can't get down. Oh, no. What a disaster, cookie. A good try, but not how that was supposed to work. Yeah, I mean, losing the Void Spirit immediately there, or losing the, you know, the Void Spirit from the fight. He got caught sitting in a tree line, thinking he could maybe make a play, but got hexed early by Lion there. Now this high ground push is coming in ages, still on line for two minutes on Troll. Yeah, he's not worried about this at all. He's got his team right behind him. MJZ was able to go use his ultimate to save his uh, mid player. Oscar's just dead. He can't do anything. He does not have the range to be able to stay alive against what they're tossing out. 21 to 4, and there is no way you're going to defend the mid racks here. The troll is not backing up. And yeah, he's just doing a little dance. He's got his party hat on. He's like, man, I feel like celebrating, like I'm about to make it into the next uh, <laughs> the next round of TI Qualls, guys. Yeah, only one round remaining after this, and they're looking fantastic to close out the game. Alacrity Troll keeps pushing here. They don't even have God Strength on Sven when he's... Like, yeah. I, I don't know how they do this. No BKB, no God Strength. And even if you did have it, going into a troll with BKB and Aegis, like, what are you going to yeah. do? There's even Oracle sitting behind. Not that he has ulti right now, but he can still do a good job protecting. It feels like a very anticlimactic way to uh, end up the series. But another tornado with the meatball right onto Genic. They cannot go for full Megas. That is the little light of hope here for the side of Mad Kings. They do have a tier 2 still up. But Adrian having to be very careful. He's trying to just farm as ferociously as possible. Uh, it's just proving to be very difficult. They smoke up, though, on the side of, of Mad Kings. They're going to see if they might be able to get onto the high ground, get some advantage for feels, the upcoming fight. It just feels very hard to do. This is a desperation move right here. This is like one of the one of the last chances you have, basically, to stop this game from completely uh, being decided. You already lost two lanes of racks at 22 minutes in, so you need to find a connection here. This smoke has to work. There's not much in terms of buyback, either. You've got buyback on your two support... Oh, Illic? PP's caught in a very awkward position as Jedek rolls onto the back lines, but they're gonna lose PP pretty fast, and the Aegis is gonna get reclaimed, but doesn't seem to matter. And they'll lose Monster, and now Knight is just chasing after Adrian here. He wants this kill. Starts putting his attention over to Oscar. We'll use a little cookie hop. It's gonna end up getting netted and is not going to survive this. As Sven finding the other opening will take down MJZ. Casualties on both sides. Another roll coming out from Jenik. He started off, he got right into those back lines immediately. And Knight is not happy about this. He's hoping that maybe he can get... Nah, not going to be able to go for it. And yeah. now, yeah, you can see that Adrian teleporting away. Needing to get back. And while this is happening, the rest of Mad Kings, they should be respawning soon. But it's still looking tough. Yeah, they're coming back, but, I mean, you don't have the tools to take the fight. You used your Sven ulti for that fight as well. There was a good attempt by Earth Spirit going in and trying to keep the Oracle away from everybody. But on the front line, however, they got a nice vacuum into double disable there. And the fight just didn't go their way at all. Now even their Tormentor is getting stolen here as Troll turns his attention towards it. I mean, it gives them a little bit of time, right? Because of the fact that... They don't have the Oracle, they don't have Aegis anymore, so it feels like Thunder probably going to play cautiously uh, because they don't have the insurance policy for their troll right now. 
Yeah, you have you have time. The problem is that losing both mid and bottom racks, you already have duties of just pushing out these lanes. So making any form of aggressive move here, it's going to be so far away since you don't have your out of towers anymore, and it's going to be very difficult to connect anything. However, they're still going to try. They have the smoke coming out. I mean, Knight's showing himself in mid lane, but they have to assume that the rest of the uh, the rest of the squad is right behind him. And that's a, ooh, that's a nice rune. Although it does end up, oh, it's an even nicer rune. Knight says that's fine. I'll happily take a double damage over haste any day. And he pings out. He's like, yeah, I want this top area. Let's go. That's, that's one thing I really like about Knight as a player. It just feels like he knows exactly when to lead the charge. Yeah, he's good at identifying when he can go somewhere and play towards objectives. He has the Oracle behind him, so even without Aegis here, feels like he already has that sense of security anyway. Uh, and yeah, he's just laying into the tower already. Yeah, and Jay-Z trying to get in the perfect position so that way he does not get jumped on on the back lines as they've tried to do before. Look at Adrian, though. He's got the God Strength going. He's smoked up. He's waiting for that opportune moment. And he does manage to get MJZ, so he's dead now. Knight having to just fight through. And they have the Snapfire because it's coming out from Austin, but they have the BKB, so it doesn't seem to matter too, too much. Beautiful wall vacuum combo coming out now from Darks here. This tornado up in the air trying to land over onto Adrian. Not going to be able to connect the Sun Strike. The only one they've lost of right now is the Oracle, and it just doesn't seem like they're going to want to stop. Still, all right, the jump forward. Oh, beautifully done by Knight, though, as the troll immediately turns back around, uses that ultimate to stay alive and just mow through everyone. Waga, I don't know. This is looking like the end. GG's come out. Thunder Awaken is going to the next level. They're going to be able to go fight with Akatsuki for a spot to play in the International. Yeah, they're just absolutely...